Hello everyone, Linda Israel here, and I'm recording this video to make it a live premiere on Thursday, November the 5th, because I don't have internet still. I finally got power, but we don't have internet, and I have to create a video and then go to a different location to upload it. So it's been kind of crazy around here, but I thought I would show you how to make a mini journal using the mini kit from A Christmas Dream. This is part of my subscription and a la carte items. You can get just the mini kit as a printed kit. It comes pre-cut. You get one of these covers, one of these covers, and you get four different pages. Mine are stacked two up because this is the digital version. If you end up purchasing the digital large kit, you get the mini kit as a bonus, but you get the printed kit you can purchase outright from my shop. So here are the pages, and then you also get a page of fussy cut elements. So what I'm going to do is trim these all up and then come back and show you the next step. I have fussy cut the elements out and before I came back on I went around the edges with distress ink walnut stain. You can also use uh, I think it's espresso that's really dark. I like the darker because I don't have to work as hard to add the color around the edges. And then I came back with tulip dimensional glitter fabric paint. So you find this in like the t-shirt decorating aisle if you go to a physical store or you can order it online. I'll have a link to Amazon. And it's normally like $4.99 at Hobby Lobby. And I use my 40% off coupon. But I went in and just kind of touched it. I don't know if you can kind of see that glitter on there. I just kind of swirl it around and add it. And these are going to be the covers. And then I've got my other fussy cut elements here. So I thought what we would do is I'm grabbing a page out of a large family Bible. And this is a Bible that I picked up at, I don't know if I got it at a book sale, like the Friends of the Metropolitan Library book sale. I may have picked it up at a thrift store. And I feel like that a book is just a bound bunch of papers with words on it. I do not feel that it is sacrilege to use a Bible page in my junk journal or any of my art projects because it's just a paper with words on it. Those words, once I read them, are sacred in my heart. So I wanted to put that out there because I had someone kind of question me that this is wrong to use them. No, it isn't. It's just paper. Just think of it as just paper. If you have a problem with using books, pick up a book from like a thrift store or a dollar store for, you know, a dollar or less and just tear it up. Don't worry about it. It's just paper. So I've got a book page here and I thought what I would do is let's start by scraping some acrylic paint on top. This is a way that <clears throat> I like to alter a page and give me some possible writing space or whatnot. So I'm just going to come in here. I'm going to do two of them at the same time. That way I have them in case I need them for another page or project. And I'm just putting a little coat of paint and then just scraping across the page. And the more times you scrape it, the thinner that paint will be. <clears throat> but I also want to basically obscure the text just a little bit. I'm going to set this aside to dry and I'll do a couple more pages in different colors. I like using cookie sheets to lay my pages on so that I can stack them and not worry about messing up my backside of the paper. This time I have a smaller piece of paper. This is from a Bible encyclopedia, and I thought it would be a fun page to use as a little bit smaller. So I'm going to grab Christmas green and put that down. And now I've got true red. I'm going to do that on another book page. I'm going to give this a couple minutes to dry, and I'll go back to my first two pages and put paint on the other side. 
All right, so I've come back to the original two sheets and I'll flip these over and apply paint on the back sides of these because I want to use both sides of them. I'm noticing there's still some wet on them, so I'm just hitting them with my heat tool really fast. So I'm using the ivory or cream color paint on the back side. Now that these pages are painted, I'm setting them aside to dry. I, I may hit them with a heat tool again. I want to clean up my workspace just a little bit here because I want to bring back the red and the green paper that we painted and let's use some stencils. Okay, so I grabbed the red sheet and I have the stencil that comes in the Christmas Dream subscription box or creative kit. And I've got a couple pieces of washi tape. And what I'm doing is just to help keep that stencil from popping up too much, I'm going to tape it down to my work surface here. And I'm grabbing the Christmas green, and we're going to put some in a little palette here. I've got my little foam dauber. I use these whenever I'm doing direct-to-paper techniques. I've used them on my gel plate, but I find that these are pretty easy to use with acrylic paint through a stencil because they don't need a lot of paint and the sponge works really well. And I'm gonna come in here and use a daubing motion up and down to add some green paint. This is a technique that if you don't have scrapbook papers, you can't afford to buy scrapbook papers, but you do have some acrylic paint and some stencils, you can make your own background paper. All right, so then I will take off the tape and then I will wash my stencil while this page is drying. And then it will come back and let's add some other color and texture to it. <clears throat> See how that looks before it dries? The page isn't quite dry yet, so I'm coming in here with a heat tool to dry a little bit. I'm looking at this, I'm trying to decide if I want to add some gold to it. And I thought maybe, you know, I got a couple of ideas. I was gonna do it with a stencil, but I'm thinking now maybe I'll do it with a rubber stamp. I have this new floral, oh, what is it called? I just got the name out. But Botanical Fern, it's a new rubber stamp that I've added to my shop. And I think, maybe what I can do is emboss this on top of the paper. And I'm okay that if it doesn't come out perfect, meaning that if the image isn't perfect all over, it's just kind of hit and miss. It just gives it a nice little elegant flourish of gold. So I'm gonna grab my Versamark ink pad and I'll just ink this up. And let's just kind of stamp it. And I'm okay, again, if it doesn't come out perfect. I just want a little bit of the bossing powder to kind of stick to my page. I have a gold glitter embossing powder, so I'm just going to sprinkle this over the whole page. And I think I didn't have enough ink in my ink pad. I may need to uh, re-ink it. But I'm going to go ahead and heat it and see what it looks like. Well, it didn't come out perfect, but I like that there's just touches of gold here and there on here. So I'm going to set this aside, and then let's decorate the green page with something. This time I have the quilted starburst stencil. I thought it would look kind of pretty done in red on top of the screen. So again, I'm putting down my washi tape around the edges just to help hold it in place. And then I'll grab some red paint and my dauber and daub some paints on here. All right, I'll remove the stencil and let's dry this. I like it with the red starburst on here. All right, so this time I've picked up Twas the Night, and it's this background or word saying that says, Twas the night before Christmas went all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. So this time I'm going to ink it up. I did re-ink my Versamark pad, and I'm going to stamp it and then rotate it. 
I'll use the same gold embossing powder and go over the whole thing. I'm already liking how this looks. I know y'all can't see it very well. Let's go ahead and emboss this. You see how shimmery that is? It looks really cool. I like the way it turned out. Okay, so let's go back. I'm getting all my papers ready. So if you're, you're wondering what we're doing, we're building all of our papers that we're going to use. So I'm going to go back to the ivory paper. And remember, it is two-sided. So I'm going to want to decorate both sides because I am going to cut this basically in half to make it into a journal page. So I want a nice variety. So I'm gonna go back to a different stencil. I believe this is from the September Stencil Club. So I'm just gonna line this up. It's gonna almost cover the whole thing. So again, I'll grab my washi tape. Got some embossing powder on my desk. I hope y'all are enjoying this tutorial, that you're having fun. Again, if you're watching this as a live premiere today, please say hi in the chat. I will be in the chat speaking with y'all via text, uh, but I won't be live per se to answer your questions on the video. But if you do have questions, feel free to ask those. All right, so this time I'm gonna come back with the red and I've used the September Stencil Club image and I don't wanna cover the whole thing. I just want it in some area. So I'll just kinda of come in here and do a corner and then maybe move over and do another little area. And then another little area. Okay, and I'm going to sneak this piece of paper out and set it aside. And then I will pick up the other page and slide that underneath. See if I can't get it to line up. Because my stencil's already messed up, dirty, got paint on it, so I'll just repeat it. All right, so my page is dried. I'm flipping it over, and I now have the holly leaves stencil. I'm going to put that on top. Washi tape it down. You're getting the drill, right? I'm going to grab the green, the Christmas green, and we're going to come back in and use the dauber again like we did with the other side. All right, I think I, I like the way this is looking. All right, I'm gonna lift this up, take out the paper, see how that looks so far. And then I'm gonna grab the other page that we painted earlier, flip it over and slide it underneath. All right, I'm going to take the tape off again, clean my stencil, and then we're gonna dry this page. Now I have the polka dot, small polka dot stencil, and I'm putting that in my spray box, and I'm grabbing the golden ornament. It's a gold shimmer, glimmer mist, and we're going to spray over the top of this, and that'll add just a little bit of gold to our page. I'm just grabbing a piece of copy paper to lay on top to mop up that gold, and then I'll spray the back side. So now I have this gold dotted paper so i'll set that aside to dry and you can kind of see it it kind of puddled in a couple of places mainly because the paper is painted so i'm just going to set this aside to dry and i'll repeat that on the other green page i'm just flipping the page over and i've got the large polka dot stencil so I'm going to go ahead and spray this again with the same gold. And I'll come back with my mop-up paper from earlier. I'm trying to see, okay, this side. Oh, there was a little bit of color on there, so it transferred and kind of turned it green. And you can kind of see the polka dots in the background there. So I'll set that aside. 
just hitting it with my heat tool to get it to dry. Okay, I think I'm at a point now where I want to go ahead and cut these into the size of book page that I want to use. That way I can focus a little bit more on decorating the areas so that they're visible and whatnot. So I'm going to get out my paper trimmer and do that. And I'm just using one of the book pages, in this case the cover, as a guide to know how big to cut it. Just in case whenever I print it on my printer, maybe it wasn't exactly the size I thought it was. And then I'll have some strips we can use later on. So if you care, the text would be right side up. So I'm just kind of looking at this to see what do I want to do next. I'm thinking that maybe I'll make a little pocket to go in the corner here out of this green. So let's see what size I want to make it. Probably, let's grab a, I've got another book page here. I think what I'm going to do is glue these two pages together first and then I'll cut them as one and it'll make it a little bit thicker. I'm using my bone folder to help spread that glue all the way out to the edge. Okay, so now I'm going to cut this into, oh, let's say a two-inch strip. That'll be a nice size pocket for a little mini journal. But I think I only want to put it on one side. I think I want to leave the other side open. I don't know. I'm kind of looking at it, trying to decide. If I want pockets on all the sides or just one. If I cut this up, I could split it between the two pages and then have a variety. So I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm looking at this. The pocket would need to be a little less than three and a half inches. So I'm just going to cut this into just shy of three and a half inches. That could be a pocket on that page there. And while I'm at it, I'll glue another piece of paper to the red and we'll make pockets for the opposite side. So I'm going to cut a strip again, about, what did I say, two inches? Yeah, two inches by just under three inches, three, just under three and a half inches. I think I'm going to go all the way around and apply some Distress Ink to the edges. All right, so the red is going to go on the side with the green. So I'm just kind of lining these up where I think I want them. So we're going to glue those down. Flip them over. And I think we'll just put the green in the same concept because when you flip it, yeah, that'll work. Okay, I'm liking that. All right, so let me get my fussy cut elements and let's use some of those to decorate the page. I have a little tag that might be cute in the pocket here. Got another one. I've got a little birdie that might look cute up there. There's another birdie. I'm liking that. All right, so I'm going to glue this together. have just a piece of coffee dyed index card. I think that'll be a cute little pocket in there or card in there. I've got another one I like that. All right, let me look at my rubber stamps and see what we can find. I've got a little piece of craft card stock and I think putting Merry Christmas on there would be really cute. So I'll find a block that this will fit on. And I'm just going to stamp it in black, jet black ink. So wouldn't that look cute right on there? Let's add some distress inks. I have this little rectangle left over, so I cut it into two pieces. And I'm going to do it the same here. Basically, it's right around 
three inches wide. So I'm just cutting it into one and a half inch pieces. I thought that could be an additional pocket because I still have a couple of little elements that we could put on here. So let's try to use them all. All right, so I'm just selecting a couple other little elements and I think we're gonna do this little flower element here in the corners. And I've got these two my fingers are dirty, uh, two three by three squares that I've already applied some distress inks to them. So let's stamp something on here. I've got the little tree from the festive cube and I thought that would be cute right here in the middle. I think we should emboss it with gold embossing powder. Why not? I think that's going to look really cute. I have the sentiment that says Christmas Tide, so I think that would look cute right here. And we've got this little music. Get this back over, and I think the mason jar can go on this side. All right, I'm liking the way that this page set turned out. So now what I'm going to do is take this paper make sure it's dry and cut it down to be the same size as our other journal pages and then get it ready to make another journal page i've cut down the page that we made with the golden ornament on the copy paper using the polka dot stencils and i picked out this is the little ornaments stamp and I thought just for simplicity, it would be really cute just to stamp this in the corners. Not all your journal pages have to be super embellished. Just letting you know that is possible. And then I've got another page here. Let me get all the little elements ready. I made one just so I would know what I wanted to do. So here I use the same stencil from the subscription club or the, uh, I use the same stencil from a Christmas dream creative kit and I use the holly leaf green through the stencil and I've got one of the calico collage butterflies again Norella of calico collage helped me with my Christmas dream kit she created the digital images using some of my stencil designs in the background to create this beautiful kit I've got the starburst stamp so I'm going to stamp it with black ink in the upper corner and then flip this over. On this side, I have this little beady beady domino type image. So maybe it would fit a miniature domino if you can find them. Put that over here. And this is called Around the World. So it's Santa and his reindeer flying across the sky. And then I have Ho Ho Ho. This is the small version. There's two sizes. So I have the smallest one. So I gotta make sure I get it straight. And it says, ho, ho, ho. Isn't that cute? So there is another journal page made. And then off camera, just because it's been a little over two hours that I've spent on this tutorial so far. <laughs> so I decided that I would just speed line the rest of it. So I took a piece of scrapbook paper and trimmed it down to size. I used the corner pocket piece and made a pocket. Here I use a journal card that I made. It's three and a quarter inches wide, tall, wide and hmm, about five inches tall. And then I stamped the word believe on here and just put some distressed inks around the edges. So try to get that back in the pocket. And then on this side from the festive cube, I stamped this little tree, looks like a little ornament, and then use the admit ticket. And then this is one of my another stencil club 
for some reason my camera does not want to cooperate Let's see if that makes a little bit of a difference not washing out so much and so i did that with distress oxide forest moss in a blending tool so now i have all my little pages ready so I'm going to uh, clean off my desk here. We're going to bind the journal together. And then if y'all have any more questions or comments, now's the time to ask. All right, let me get this cleaned up and I'll be right back. I've laid out the pages in the order in which I think I want to put it together. A lot of people ask me, how do I come up with this idea? And what I do is try to think about the printed elements, a thinner paper, something that has embellishment or thickness to it, and kind of alternate those so that when you're flipping through the journal, you get some neat texture and different types of paper that you're flipping through. So that's part of the reason why I kind of line them out like this. And I had someone else saying, you know, yes, you showed me a page tutorial. Now, how do you put it in a journal? I said, well, you take all these pages, fold them half, and then we're going to start stacking those together. So I'm going to grab a cover and then grab a image or the Calico collage page and then one of my pages that I made and then just keep going down the line until I have all of these put together. Now again, thank you for watching. Thank you for being here, part of this live premiere. I'm hoping, I'm praying that I will have internet so that I can do a live stream next Monday. So hopefully you'll come back and join us then. If you like this video, if you enjoyed this tutorial, do me a big, big favor share this video with your friends so that other people will find me and come and join me and it kind of helps with you know my being able to do this as a full-time job so that i can keep coming up with creative ways for y'all to put together journals so please help me with that also if you haven't subscribed to my channel please subscribe and of course if you would please give this video a thumbs up and leave me a comment of what you think thought about this tutorial after this live premiere is open or over I don't know why I said open over all right so I'm just going to bind these with what I call a pamphlet stitch I have a little template that I use and I've got my Tim Holtz craft pick and I've got a piece of fun foam so I just put six pages in here. I thought that would be enough for a mini journal because it could for sure fit inside of another journal. Or you could give this as a gift, write some notes in it and send it to someone special. So I'm just doing the pamphlet stitch. I've poked three holes. Now I'm going to grab some wax linen thread. I'm going to look to see if I have some that are long enough. So I'm going to do three times the height of my journal in wax linen thread. And then I'll double that since I am making two journals. Do come back on Monday because hopefully if I'm live, I will have a few things to give away, raffle off, and you can have a chance to win some prizes. So definitely come back on Monday. So I just did a quick pamphlet stitch. I'll tie this off and then do the other one. All right, this is it. Do you have any questions? Let me know. I greatly appreciate you again watching and taking the time to be a part of my streams. I greatly appreciate it. Oh, this is looking really cute. All right, let's do the other one. Don't get caught up yet, Linda. Don't sew your template into your journal. <laughs> By the way, I do offer these bookbinders needles in my shop. They're really sturdy. They're narrow-eyed, so they don't make a giant hole in your journal as you're sewing it. Putting all my tools back in my junk journal tools bag. And now let's do a quick flip through of the journals. So they're basically the same. The only differences will be the different printed pages and covers that I use. So here is one of the covers and it has such a nice texture since I added that glitter paint on here. And then there's the inside. And then the next page. So we've got a little stamp page. We've got a nice place to journal. We have the journaling card here that we can use. The scrapbook paper. 
the printed page again. The notebook paper, this was a full sheet of ruled notebook paper and I just trimmed it down to be the size that I needed it after I sprayed it with some tattered angels. And then our painted page that we made at the first with our painted pocket. There's the dead center. And there's still room for whoever that gets this journal to add their own stuff. You can even take it apart and add more pages if you like. I really like how this turned out. It's super cute. And there's a kitty cat, Christmas blessings. That one's pretty cute. And then here's the one with the bird on the front. And there's the inside. It's got a bird on the inside. I need to add some distress ink here. Sometimes I don't cut perfectly straight. So you can kind of hide it a little bit with some distress ink. <laughs> Like the little lace bits. Super, super cute. I like the way this has come together. Well, again, I know I've said it, but thank you so much for watching. Definitely give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and leave a comment afterwards. I'm going to sign these journals and get off here and get this video ready to upload for y'all. <laughs> Thank you again for being here. Y'all have a fabulous day. We'll hopefully see you next time at the live chat. Take care, everybody. Bye.